Hey everybody, welcome to Snow Talk. Brian Good here on this lovely Thursday. Uh, a couple side notes. Uh, I will not be here tomorrow. Uh, I will be out celebrating uh, the last time we get to see Carrie Fisher. Uh, so I'll be out at uh, Star Wars late tonight. I'm not going to say where, but if you see me out, make sure to say hello. Uh, Ryan Hulk and myself will be hanging out there tonight. We're going to be nerds together uh, watching uh, Star Wars tonight. And uh, so, anyway, so uh, now I'm not expecting a lot to really change over the weekend in general. But if something significant were to catch my eye, I'll let you know. Otherwise, really, when it comes to the setup for Christmas weekend and Christmas, uh, guys, we're going to have to wait until next week to really get a lot of our answers. Um, because it, between now and then, we're just kind of speculating. We're kind of just looking at the data and. You can take all the data we're getting now and twist it so many different ways to get different ideas and views, and it can get confusing. I get that, and it's frustrating and stressful. Um, but having said that, we can at least tell by this point, by looking at all the trends and the data coming in, that uh, it's a significant pattern change and significant weather events may very well take place. And that doesn't always necessarily mean snow. Um, it could mean every single type of weather event is possible with this kind of a setup coming our way, and it could certainly mean significant snow, and I'm not necessarily saying it would be here. I hope that's not confusing you more. I'm just saying that the, pa the pattern is very dynamic, so the models are not going to do the great job of, of details of which county is going to get what and what day are we going to get that. Uh, that part we can't tell you, but the overall trends is what we've, we've been looking at all week long for, for a while, in fact, and uh, we're going to look at more of that today and let you know what the, the trends are showing. Let's, uh, speaking of today, let's talk about that now. We do have this thin layer of clouds of red. I'm seeing some blue mixed in there. It's kind of a hazy, filtered sun sunshine kind of day. The winds have really relaxed compared to the past couple of days, but still a little gusty. No, still a few flurries coming off. Looks like Lake Michigan there, west of uh, Indy. I wouldn't write a flurry in our northern counties. It's possible, but for the most part, we're talking about a dry day today and a little breezy in some spots, but just flat out cold. We're going to recover now from the lower point of the day here. Looks like we're going to be 32, may not have been our low for the day. Uh, and then we'll climb back up. We were 50, by the way, around midnight. So it's been a cold morning. So let's talk about the setup here. because we still got some dry air. We can see how that drier air is working its way in from the Great Lakes. It's that white area from the north. So here's Futurecast. And shows a quiet setup really for tonight. See that lake effect showing up there in the top. Uh, it's going to get cold again tonight, tomorrow. The wind will begin to become a little more breezy out of the southwest tomorrow. The model there is showing 39. I think we'll go into the 40s tomorrow. And it may be a little gusty. Not to advisory level, but a little gusty tomorrow. And uh, better chance for some blue sky, I think, tomorrow as well. Saturday, I did go above guidance on Saturday. I, I'm going 55. I think that southwest flow is going to be in pretty good for us. And we should do really well in that scenario. Uh, so that's where I'm going to go with it for now. We'll see how this plays out. So after that, we get into the setup for Sunday and Christmas. So let's get right into it. <sighs> Hope you got some popcorn. Here we go. It's good they didn't have a time limit on this day, or they would cut me off every day. Here's the Euro first. You're looking at the overall pattern. Obviously, you can tell where the... It's not necessarily warm and cold you're looking at on the colors, but it gives you a general idea that colder weather will be found in the blue and, and warmer weather in the orange. It's the best way I can display this to make it simpler for you guys. Uh, so here we go. We've got uh, still an active jet stream across the northern tier of the country, and now we're getting this energy cut off really and Mexico and Texas that works its way in. That is going to be our system for Sunday. Yesterday it looked like we may see something dive out of the Rockies. It was going to try to phase. We were seeing hints of that yesterday. Today, not so much. If anything, it's the energy in the other portion of the upper jet, the polar jet, that actually will phase with this in the northern Great Lakes and pull it off to the north there. Uh, so for us, it's the showers. We've got to watch this little system here. And I'll show you that on GFS. If the trend is to keep it mainly south along the Gulf Coast, but there is a chance. It depends on how this flow sets up. The Euro is real aggressive on the polar jet being angled over us uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday next week. If that's the case, the system has no choice but to go off to the east. Uh, but if it's not as deep or it's a little more angled, then this may sneak in from the south for, say, next Tuesday or Wednesday. So I've got low chances in to account for this potential, and we'll just see how it plays out. Uh, but the Euro is not too impressed. It does then begin to bring in our system for the 22nd. At this point, it's the first day of winter, officially. Rain, maybe some thunder, possibly on the leading edge of that. It rolls on in. Notice it's got some snow with it. But here is, again, this is not necessarily warmth, but it gives you an idea of how the pressure is lower and higher. The Southeast Ridge showing up here, our lovely friend, the Southeast Ridge. So here it is building. Here we go, the cold air being dumped, mainly over the Rockies and the Central Plains, so to the west. Then as we head toward Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, the ridge gets even stronger. 
holding Tef. This is then going to force a lot of the energy to really dig even further into the Baja Peninsula, and then we'll get pieces to get angled at it like a slingshot. Just constant flow of systems will ride on that edge all the way through the new year. So our biggest battle we have as meteorologists has got to figure out, is this first off correct? Um, because, as you'll see in a second, we know there's going to be some blocking here in the Pacific Ocean in the northern part. But we have to figure out, if that's the case, are we going to be able to hold on any blocking at all across Greenland here uh, to influence a little bit here of this Atlantic Ridge? But, and I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, but it seems like uh, we are looking at some extreme weather. When you get this kind of a look here, kind of almost a Rex block, if you will, you get this extreme look, you're going to get extreme weather out of this. And we are going to be very close to the edge. So is the ridge going to be where it is, or is the ridge going to be pushed back to the southeast again, and the cold air will infiltrate a little more of the country? Both really good questions. I don't have those answers. But that gives you a general idea of the setup that we're looking at for Christmas. So let's look at the GFS. Here we are now, and let's move to the weekend setup. Again, the energy drops down. Here comes a low shot out. It, too, kind of loses it to the south and fades it, uh, that northern phase in the polar jet takes that Sunday, Monday rain out. But then there's that southern gulf system. And here again, so we need to watch and see. It's doing the same thing as the euro. It's keeping the polar jet active enough in a zonal flow really aloft that it should go east. Uh, but it does bear watching. I've seen these trend before where it's a little more angled than what it looks like. And we end up getting enough ridging here to build in a system in our area with still some cold air around. So we'll watch it. I want to mention it at least. You ready for this? Here we go. Now we're getting into the 22nd. Here it comes, very similar to the Euro so far, right? We got the digging of the trough west first. Here's the southeast ridge starting to build. And then here we go into the 23rd. The ridge gets strong. Here comes the cold air. You see the rain, the snow battle zone right up on us. And then here we go as we head into, uh, let's see, then, uh, sorry, I got distracted there. Then as we head into Christmas Eve, the ridge even stronger. And look at all the snow that is breaking out across the plains. Heavy rain and flooding, maybe even severe weather in that battle zone. And of course, ice. This is a tough one, guys, uh, because we still look to be on the fence here. I'm still excited. Don't get me wrong. I said I was to say I'm excited. I think it's a very exciting weather pattern, and I do think we could get something interesting around here. I just don't know what yet, but it is very uh, dynamic setup for sure. We'll see how this plays out. But uh, this is uh, if everything, if anything ever streamlining yet, this is it. All right, let's look at the blocky boy. This turned out a little uglier than I thought. Uh, <laughs> First off, this is a weird map, but this is the West United States, and here's the Eastern United States. It splits the country in half on either side here. But here is Alaska, and notice the blocking that is shown here, that red. And it holds all the way through December uh, 26. A lot of blocking. That is the, going to be the negative EPO, a very strong negative EPO, by the way. But we don't have as much blocking in green line. We kind of just lose it a bit, which creates more of a positive NAO. So when we look at that, sure enough, that's what indices are showing. A negative, strongly negative EPO, positive NAO, and then a neutral PNA to maybe positive, maybe negative. PNA usually reacts to this late to the EPO. It'll catch up to it. We'll see if that happens. Because I was interested, this is usually the relationship the two have. Here's your EPO in red. When it goes negative, PNA goes positive. When PNA goes negative, EPO goes positive. They're inverse relationships that mean the same thing where you get blocking in the Pacific and you get a ridge there and you get um, cold weather in the east. There are times, though, the two can become negative, and I did look one of them up that I was thinking of offhand, uh, and that was taking place here strongly in a negative setup here. The PNA is more negative than the uh, EPO was, but that was January 2014. And it wasn't brutal. Again, it's hard to read. Uh, but it did turn colder. We went from the 50s into the 30s, even some 20s for highs. And we did have some constant light snow, but no big snows. But it definitely tells me you can get cold and snowy with those indices not being in reverse, inverse relationships. Having said on the snowboard, I'm going to get, keep it as a rain or snow deal, guys, and we'll watch and see how things play out for Christmas. But it could go either way on this, 
and uh, so stay tuned. We'll see how this plays out. Be patient with us, please. This is a very dynamic pattern.